Chris Young and the Diamondbacks trying to stay on top in the NL West. Bottom one was scoreless. David Wells has to turn and watch it fly off the bat of Young, his 32nd homer of the season. Diamondbacks up one to nothing. Bottom two, Webb, base hit to right. That'll score Steven Drew. Webb helping his own cause, as they like to say. Arizona up three to nothing. Next play, scary. Be advised. James Loney. It's a foul tip straight into the plate. Ball bounces back and hits him in the cheekbone. Amazingly, he would stay in the game. The at bat it continues, and Webb gets Loney to ground out. Webb, six innings, a six strikeouts, a career high 17th win for him. Diamondbacks take it six to two. Out Matt Holiday who's out with a strain left oblique. Top three Rockies up one to nothing with two on and nobody out. Todd Helton, a shot to center. Mike Cameron, gorgeous grab. Saves at least one run on the play. It's worth another look. Cameron getting it done. The next batter is Brad Hawk. And he singles to right center. Troy Tulowitzki scores. Hawks with his second RBI on the night. Rockies up three to nothing. Top eight, Colorado up four two. They're on the corners for pinch hitter Joe Koshensky. Fly ball to center. Cameron won't get that one. Charged with his fifth error of the season, and the Rockies win at six to two. So it is down to three teams in the NL West, and Arizona is in the driver's seat. Division title in four years. Ends refusing to help the Halos cause against Bartolo Colon. Before the game, a 50-minute rain delay, a first for the Angels at home since April 8th of 1999. Top five with one aboard. Ichiro, the opposite way. That'll score Jose Lopez. Mariners go up three to nothing. Cologne in line to lose a career high sixth straight. Bottom nine. Angels down three to two. Tying runner on second. Two out. JJ puts gets Garrett Anderson. Puts with his 39th save. Seattle wins three to two. Moses the past month or so. Devastating kick down the stretch. Trying to get the clinch in. Top of the fifth inning. 4 nothing. Mark Ellis with the double off the wall and left, so Nick Swisher is in. Jack Cust is in, and the A's are up 6 to nothing. Top six now, Cust facing Tom Mastney, and no Cust out here. Two-run homer to center, his 26th of the year. The A's go on to win it 9-3. to three. Now, this to the faintest of hopes of even making the field. Kenny Rogers and company out there. Top one, Emil Brown facing Kenny Rogers. Two on, two gone. Single to right. Grudzelanek in. Sweeney in. Royals up. Three to nothing early. Top eight, Grudzelanek facing Zach Miner. The double to left. Plates David De Jesus. so Grudzelanek would go four for five, and the Royals go on to win seven to four. Jays in another marathon at the stadium Saturday. He had got one of pitchers used by the Yankees. That's a team record. Now here, Hector Luna pinch hitting in the eighth. Robinson Cano alertly will throw out Greg Zahn at home as Luna gets caught up in the rundown and the Blue Jays with lead go 11 to 9. Now bottom of the eighth, same score, Melky Cabrera at bat. Grounder to second. Eats up Aaron Hill. Jorge Posada and Robinson Cano both in. Cabrera tagged out at first inning over. Yankees tie it up at 11. Now the ninth. Mariano Rivera facing Ray Almeida. Got him. Next batter, Reed Johnson. Got him too. So the game's still tied at 11 as they head to the 10th. Aaron Hill facing Jeff Karstens. Hill all the way to the wall in center field. Matt Stairs rounding the bases. I, he, very slow. Let's just put it that way. The ball like rolled to home plate. So they're still tied up at 11. Stairs out at home. Bottom of the 10th, same score, Melky Cabrera. Two on, two gone, and Cabrera with the single to right center. Johnny Damon scores. Yankees go on to win by a final count of 12 to 11 in exactly an unimaginable five out pitch in St. Pete. Sox with a chance to clinch a playoff spot if they could just handle the Tampa Bay double race. Bottom of the seventh, the Sox leading 5 3 win. Carlos Pena blast one deep into right off. Javier Lopez, a three round homer, is 42nd of the year. Top of the ninth, same score. Jason Veritek takes Al Reyes' pitch to deep left field. Veritek with the solo home run. 15th home run of the season ties the game at six. Now how about Julio Lugo? Three for five, three doubles, and an RBI versus Al Reyes. And the former Devil Ray jumps on Reyes' very first pitch. Two-run homer. Red Sox win eight to six, maintaining a two-and-a-half game lead on the Yankees, but also 
Boston by winning, Detroit losing, the Red Sox are in the postseason. But there's still the matter of the division title, something they have not won since 1995. Marlins David Rice said it's a good feeling when Mets fans outnumber Marlins fans on the road. First inning was scoreless right against Benny and Kim with one aboard singles to left. Jose Reyes scores one nothing amazing. Oliver Perez dialed in. Bottom two, he gets Miguel Cabrera swing and Matt Trainer take a seat. 102 pitches, 70 for strikes. Bottom three, Perez gets Brett Carroll. Eight strong, one earned, eight strikeouts. Top four, Ramon Castro with two aboard. Deep and gone. Number 10 on the season. Moises Alou extended his hit streak to 26 games. Mets win 7 to 2. Now, earlier in the show, take a third straight. Taking on the Nationals. Chase Utley and company getting some love. Top one, Utley's first at bat. A solo shot off Tim Redding. Phillies up 1 to nothing, just like that. Bottom seven, they're on the corners. In a 1 1 game, Felipe Lopez chops one to Utley. At second, who throws home, gets Chris Coast for the tag of Christian Guzman. It's worth another look. Coast, great tag. You stay tied at one. Top 10, Ryan Howard with two on. And nobody out. Lines one to left center off. Chris Schroeder, Utley scores. Phillies get the victory four to one. How clutch is this? Well, the Phillies remain a game and a half back in the NL East and move to within a half game of the Padres in the wild card race. And please don't sleep on the Rockies. NL Central leading Chicago behind Alfonso Soriano. Looking to win a third straight. Pirates at Wrigley. Bottom two, it's Soriano abusing the Zach Duke offering. His third home run in as many games. Number 30 on the season. We're tied at three. Bottom five. Soriano again the good wood. His 19th career multi-homer effort. Number 31 on the season. He gets the curtain call. And why not? Chicago's up 7-3. to three. Top seven, Scott Ayer on the pitch for the Cubs facing Niger Morgan. Morgan, deep fly to right. Sam Fulton giving chase. Makes the play. Throws to first to double up Nate McLeod. Ayer and Fold having some fun. Cubs win 9-5. That happens. Brewers and Braves to extras to decide this one. Top of the 10th, nobody out. Corey Hart takes Peter Moylan deep to left. Brewers up 3-2. to two. Now bottom 10, Scott Foreman standing in there, and he just crushes the offering from Francisco Cordero. His seventh blown save of the year. Game all tied at 3. And then in the bottom of the 11, Chipper Jones at the plate. One off. And Jones, routine grounder to second. Well, hate that routine. Can't turn the double play. All hands are safe. Next batter, Mark Teixeira facing Brian Schaus and Teixeira. Belts a right field base hit to bring in Willie Harris. So the Braves with the walk-off win in extries. Final count of four to three. That all being said, here's the deal in the National League Central right to the moment. Get the victory, nine to five. I hear that wall's brick. Korea versus Germany, Women's World Cup. Nadine Anya with a great save on Ryun Young as Germany wins it 3 to 0. Number 7 Temple Bowling Green Kevin Armstrong reaching high. Great one-handed grab worth another look. Owls lose 48 to 35. At number 6 Northwestern Ohio State Steven Simmons He's a ping pong ball. Bouncing off would-be tacklers, 99 yards on the punt return for the touchdown. The Wildcats, though, lose 58 to 7. Number five, we're going to the SEC, a little Kentucky, Arkansas action. Casey Dick picked up by Marcus McClinton. The incredible interception just taking the ball away from Lucas Miller. Wildcats win a 42 to 29. Aspirin, anyone? Number four, Chuck Liddell, Keith Jardine. Jardine knocking down and upsetting the former UFC light heavyweight champion, Chuck Liddell. Goes out in a split decision Saturday at the Honda Center. Oh, octagon unkind to Liddell. It's unkind to everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back on campus. Number three, South Carolina taking on LSU. Blake Mitchell throws to Jason Barnes. Danny McCray tips it. Barnes tips it. McCray picks it. Check it out again. That is great defensive teamwork. More from this game a little bit later. And the Padres trying to stay close in the NL West. We're in the fifth. Padres down 5-1. Jeff Francis to Bradley. That's just another example of a man holding us down. Bradley looking frustrated. This would be a factor. Top of seven. Still 5-1 rocks. Garrett Atkins at the plate. Nobody on. He goes to the vacancy in left center. Mike Cameron after it. 
So is Bradley both after they collide Chula balls in the corner inside the park home run. Atkins catching his breath. Another look. Bradley actually stepped on Mike Cameron's hand. They're both running the ball. Cameron left the game. A bruised right thumb. Thumb also. Rockies lead it six to one. So now here's Bradley in the home plate up. Brian Rungi discussing the last at bat. The first base up. Mike Winters with old Rungi that Bradley has thrown his bat toward him after the called third strike. Up the middle. Base hit. Should be no controversy here. But instead. Bradley in the first base up. Mike Winters are getting into it. They're not talking about the insulation value of various materials. In fact, they're still talking. Leading off, looking back to the up. Now he calls time to discuss this further. Comes right up in his face. But you notice he's not touching him. He's not doing anything but trying to get into a deeper discussion. He's tossed from the game, and now he's getting help from his coaches. Bobby Meacham tries to restrain him. Then Buck Black, the manager, actually pulls him down. You look again as we spot you a Black trying to restrain Bradley. Bradley's knee buckles as he goes to the ground, injuring his knee. MRI is due on that. Bradley gets in some more words as he's helped off the field. Later in the inning, Adrian Gonzalez is coming to bat. And Gonzalez tries to check his swing. But Hunter Wendelstedt calls it a strike from third base. Black disagrees. He too gets tossed. No one takes out his knee. The Padres, a frustrating loss to the Rockies. Milton Bradley tries to explain how it all started. I asked him, I said, did you tell him I threw my bat at him? He goes, yeah, you did. I go, are you kidding me? That's, that's completely ridiculous. Why would, you, why would you do that? Why are you even watching me? If I strike out, the inning's over. Why are you looking at me? You know, everything's always about me. He's, he, you know, he's still just yapping, yapping. Somebody in the crowd says, you oh, um. I pointed at the guy in the crowd affirming it. He goes, that's terrible, or that's Bradley. And I go, oh, I'm, oh, I'm a piece of And that's when I went at him, he kicked me out. You know, it's completely unprofessional, it's terrible. If Joey Crawford in the NBA can get suspended for going at Tim Duncan, now mind you, Tim Duncan got a way different reputation than I got, you know, but I never hurt nobody. When, do you, when, does, when does the harping on me stop? And now, because of him, my knees hurt. If it cost me my season because of that, he needs to be reprimanded. I'm going to take some action. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna just going to stand pat and accept this because I didn't do nothing wrong. What it's, kind of action can you take, Mel? Well, well, I'll figure it out. I mean, is there, is there a recourse? We'll, that we'll figure it out. Is there a recourse? That we'll figure it out. Take? We'll figure it out. Because this is, this is the most un unprofessional, most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. As he figures it out, listen to this. Testifying in defense of Bradley, his first base coach, Bobby Meacham, quoting here, in 26 years of baseball, I can honestly say that's the most disconcerting conversation I've ever heard from an umpire. It was almost like he wanted to agitate the whole thing. He wanted to get Milton boiling for some reason. Milton, he held his cool. I was just appalled. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Pretty Sizemore and the Indians can clinch it with the win. Indians up 4-0, Sizemore uh, down the line. That should be good. Casey Blake coming to score. He had two RBI, by the way. Sizemore rolling around to third. Indians go up 2-0. Sizemore four for four and two RBI. We're in the ninth. He's down 6-2. Indians one out away. Raphael Bettencourt to Mark Ellis, and he's gone. Indians win it 6-2 over the A's, clinching the first AL Central crown since 2001. Eric Wedge will address the nation. Uh, we've got a great group of guys here. We talked about it all year, but uh, this isn't just about this year. This is about from you know, when we started this thing back in 03 and, and everything that the Dolans and Mark Shapiro and Chris Antonetti, everybody has you know, is, you know, has, you know, put together here. And these guys are the ones that are doing it. It's always been about the players. Uh, we got a great group that care about each other, and, and they're great teammates. And, you know, City of Cleveland should be proud. What about the Angels trying to lock up their third AL West title in four years? Jeff Weaver trying to keep the Mariners' slim playoff hopes alive. Nice try. Angels up 1-0 runner on first. Masir Istur is a two-run blast. Istur is his sixth home run of the year. It's 3-0 Angels. Casey Kochman also went deep. Let's rock it to the ninth inning. Angels up 7-4, two out. Francisco Rodriguez against pinch hitter Jeremy Reed. No contest. Save number 38. It's for not Francisco over for Rodriguez. Rodriguez. It's over. John Lackey wins his 18th. Jared Weaver happy to get it done before fans with rally monkeys. It feels good, man, to be able to do it at home and do it in front of your home crowd. And uh, to get it done at home is uh, a great feeling, that's for sure. I tell you what, 
It, that's nothing like it. You know, you wait uh, all through spring, all through winter, all through spring for the whole year, and you can't dance <laughs> unless you go to the, get to the party, you know? And the Nationals, Charlie Manuel and the Phillies, just a game and a half behind the Mets and the NL East going in. Pre-game ceremony featured Frank Howard, the great Frank Howard. Here's Ryan Howard striking out swinging. Congratulations to him. He ties Adam Dunn for the most strikeouts in one season, 195. He can still get it. Top of nine, Chad Cordero on the mound. Trying to close a 5-2 game. Aaron Rowan singles left, bringing it home Utley. Phillies cut the lead 5-3. Next batter, tying run, is at the play with one out. Cordero gets Wes Helms to go away, two away. Next batter, it's worth chop rock alive. Nats close out RFK in a big way, holding down the fills, 5-3. Heard that the Phillies had lost. Moises Alou, top of the eighth, two on, three two, they're down, and Alou. That'll bring in David Wright. Alou ties the game at three, sets a new Mets franchise record, 27 game hit streak. Mets scored four runs in that eighth inning. To the ninth we go. Mets up six to five, though. They had that 6 3 lead. Billy Wagner bothered by back spasms, and it showed. Picking up where Aaron Heilman left off. Heilman let off, let off two runs, and then uh, Dan Ugla. Gives Wagner his fifth blown save of the year, tying the game at six. Ugla's 31st of the year. Top 11, David Wright up two on, nobody out. Hello, NL MVP, perhaps. Big hit up the middle. Mets win in 11, seven to six. So the Mets are two and a half up on the fills. Their magic number is five. They have seven games left, all at home. Wakefield came into this one nine and oh in his career at Tropicana Park. Bottom of two, no score. Nine and one. Delman Young, he has it taking place. Homer number 13 for him. Devil Rays up 2-0. Top of six. Sox down 4-2. Coco Chris lines one to center. That's the base hit. Alex Cora comes and scores. Sox within one. Trailing 4-3. Next batter, Eric Hinsky. Hinsky. Broken bat. John Switzer starts the one, two, and three. Wakefield takes the loss. Sox can't lose on Monday. They're off. Austin, Messina looking for win number 250. Top four tie game, Messina facing John McDonald, two on McDonald. Up the middle, Milky Cabrera. Cabrera throwing home to Jose Molina. Molina tagging out Greg Zahn at the plate. What the? Check it out again. Does Molina get the tag on Zahn? John Gibbons doesn't think so, but home plate umpire Daryl Cousins says, oh yeah, he does. Molina also had three RBIs on the day. Messina goes seven, allowed seven hits, three earned runs. Job of time, Jobber Chamberlain, happy 22nd birthday. Striking out Adam Lynn, the nasty slider was awesome for Java. Yanks win 7-5. As Kenneth mentioned, the Red Sox have Monday off as we look at the AL East. But widen their NL Central lead and make Alita happy. Carlos Zambrano facing Niger Morgan. Zambrano throwing heat. Six Ks for Zambrano. And you know, Kenny, he was trying to get his first win at Wrigley since the 18th of July. Yeah. Yeah. I knew you would know. Cubs are going well, Ellie. They really are. They're trying to win their 10th game in the last 12. And Derek Lee. What about Derek like Lee? 20 homers, seven times in his career or something? Everybody knows that. During a pitching change in the seventh, Alfonso Soriano taking a close look at the Brewers. The Brewers lose. The Cubs win. They are now leading Milwaukee by three and a half in the central. Gonzalez one and three with an ERA over eight in his career against L.A. And in this game, he pitched with a blister. It was so bad, he had to use crazy glue on it. Didn't work here. Tony Abreu, second homer of the season, both coming at Chase Field. Top five, Dodgers up three to one, runner on first, James Loney. Remember he fouled the ball off his face Saturday? Well, he came back Sunday to hit a home run. Number 13, Dodgers go on to win 7-1. to one. They snap their seven-game losing streak. So Arizona's lead in the NLS stays at 2.5. Real story, NL wildcard.